As a black person in South Africa, you are never not an activist, whether you know it or not. The fact that we are looking and you get to experience it down, when we see it down and you get to experience these differences and these inequalities, you know that things are messy this side. We are down, we too long, everything starts to be clean. That they forces you to start questioning things. And I think for me, that's when I started to think, okay, there are these differences, but I didn't know how you address those. And for me, as a child, I've always thought to Kuba, okay, there are these inequalities, but what I wanna do, I wanna study and get out. And it is young in the Sifuna election, that's all we want. But Funu Funda and pull me up. I joined the SJC when I first came to work for the SJC as an educator, political educator, in 2015, 16. So I wanted to study accounting, but I realized somewhere, but okay, accounting is not for me. Politics, rather, is what I'm interested in. But the interesting thing there is that you study politics undergrad, and really, nothing speaks to you're in the inequalities. No, nothing speaks to the experiences of black people in South Africa. You are taught theory, and nothing really says this is what Miko said, for instance, or this is what um, Sobukwe said, or all of those things. But what you get taught is philosophies and thoughts and, and, and from elsewhere. And that, for me, was a great disconnect from my experiences. Luckily, I found work in this space that actually teaches you because you put me university thinking that you know things. And then use it to the real world. And that's where you are really taught what it means to be an activist, what it means to grapple with your world, and how you sort of interpret your experiences and how you maneuver the world as a black person, as a black woman. How do you negotiate your life and your existence in this patriarchal, white capitalist world. Those are the things that you are not taught at school any. Those are the things that you are not taught at university. My dad's a pastor, so Kulele Kawen strictly um, PK. I mean, Kulele Kawen, I wouldn't really say that is a challenge, but it shapes how you think. If you want the, one of the most patriarchal spaces, go to church. So that shapes your thinking as a woman. It found this by in the What's prevalent is concerned is that as a woman, as a girl, you're not given a space to find yourself. There's a certain definition of what a girl, a woman, a wife should look like. And for the longest time, I never fitted any of those. <laughs> I think what assisted me a lot is that my parents, as much as they are pastors, are very open-minded people and you are given that space to find yourself. But I was for mana in a space that teaches you what a woman is. And it is a very narrow definition of what a woman is. And when you are trying to find yourself and you are not fitting in because a woman doesn't answer back and now you touch me, I want to put you in your place first. And that for me didn't, for many people that didn't, fit what a woman should look like. And so I've always grappled with what I was told I should be and what I felt I was as a person. And we always think that patriarchy is a problem for women. Patriarchy is a problem for everyone because it limits how we interact as people.
it teaches men that it's not okay to be you. You have to be a macho type of man that doesn't have feelings. Hence, we have violent and da 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 men. It teaches women that it's okay for you to be subservient and to be abused and da da da. All of that is a package of problem that doesn't need only women to address, but men themselves should start grappling about with how patriarchy limits them, with how patriarchy is violent to men themselves. Yeah, I'm an activist every day. Is there a point where we say, well, they're in and you're not concerned about your surroundings? There's never. So there's never a point where we are not grappling with the world and trying to understand it better and see how we make the world a better place for everyone. I mean, silly things like you will hear a boy addressing a girl partner in a very disrespectful way. And you want to say how, when, who gave you the right to do that? That is the feminist, the activist in you saying, not on my watch type thing. So, <laughs> so, so there are those, you are always working, but yes, you try to relax and spend time with the little ones and have fun a bit and spend time with the family. But you know, to have this person that is very helpless and that totally depends on you for protection, for life, I think that makes you more vulnerable and makes you softer in a way. In a way, um, someone said having a child is like letting a part of your heart out and you can't really, you let it out and you have no control over it once it's out there and I think that is not a very clever thing to do now when you think about it. We really cannot shape the world. As much as we fight and we struggle and we try to make the world a better place, the world is a place. We owe it to our children to continue to fight and to struggle and to make sure that we give them a better world. I think if not for ourselves, we have to do the work that we do and push boundaries and not be okay with just being, to, with just saying we have the best constitution in the world. Who does it work for? Can Ukawe exercise a right in that constitution in, in, in five, ten years to come? Constitution is something that's written and it's there. And who does it work for? The people that have always been privileged. So how do we make this world a better place? If black people as a nation we are a landless nation. We want to give our children in, in, an inheritance, right? Yeah. What sort of world are our kids inheriting if we are living like guests, not even guests, I don't know, foreigners in this, in this country of our birth? We don't belong. The fact that top of my pimple and the banana number was a ping up. How do you basically destroy the world as we know it and build a world where everyone belongs, where everyone has ownership? I wouldn't want Upa or Kanyoka to be answering these questions as adults to say, How do we? create a better world for everyone, for black people specifically. In South Africa, how do we do that? I wouldn't want my kids to be battling with that. I think that's what 
should make us a civil kick scene and work to improve the world. Yonge, all kinds of oppression. Zuwela pays comfazomia. I mean, we are oppressed in Sambi as the black nation, but there's an extra layer of oppression because you're a black, because you're a woman. But when you look around, we see who's giving the most, who's making the most sacrifices, who's sacrificing their own health, their own safety, their own mental health even, so that everyone else is fine. Those are black women. And who is being killed and abused and all of that, those are black women. And you never see those people stopping to give. You never see them stopping to, to love, to care. Everyone wants a piece of you. Everyone is taking from a black woman. But black women continue to give and they continue to be kind. They continue to be human to everyone. And that's what, and that's what inspires me. There's a song, it's time to call it SJC. That's, that's my favorite song at the moment. That's what I love. Isuela me, Isuela me, Isuela me.